The WHO previously warned news organizations and governments against using the word pandemic to describe the coronavirus outbreak. So what has changed since then? Let's watch this. WHO has been assessing this outbreak around the clock and we're deeply concerned both by the alarming levels of spread and severity and by the alarming levels of inaction. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. World Health Organization Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus made clear that the declaration didn't mean that countries should give up trying to contain the virus. The virus has infected more than 120,000 people around the world and killed more than 4,300. Pandemic has nothing to do with how serious the illness is. It just means a disease is spreading widely, as pointed out by Dr. Eliana Wen, visiting professor of health policy and management at the George Washington University. An epidemic is when there is an outbreak of a disease in a particular area. When COVID-19 first came to be, it was concentrated in Wuhan and then in Hubei province and then in China. So there was an outbreak in a concentrated area. But then COVID-19 began spreading rapidly all around the world. And now there are over 100 countries in which there is COVID-19, not only from travelers from China and other hotspots, but also that are spreading in the community, person to person, all around the world. At that point, it is a pandemic and not just an epidemic. The World Health Organization typically calls a pandemic when a new virus is spreading in two regions of the world. COVID-19 is now spreading in parts of four. The term is likely to stoke global anxiety, something the UN Health Agency was sensitive to. Previously, Tedros acknowledged the word itself may certainly cause fear without preventing any infection or saving a single life. The label triggers governments to activate preparedness plans and possibly take emergency procedures to protect the public, such as more drastic travel and trade restrictions. The World Health Organization already declared COVID-19 an international emergency. Words matter. It's important that we call it for what it is. Public health experts, including myself, have been saying for weeks that COVID-19 is a pandemic. Calling it a pandemic does not refer to the degree of the severity, but rather it refers to the degree of the spread. And at this point, COVID-19 matches that definition of a pandemic, and it is a call to action for everyone all around the world to be vigilant and to be aware that COVID-19 is a pandemic that could claim lives and that does claim lives. Regular seasonal flu has a death rate of 0.1%. Exactly how lethal this new coronavirus will be isn't yet clear and may vary from place to place, especially as countries first grapple with an influx of cases. But COVID-19 does seem less deadly than its cousin SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, and MERS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, even though it is spreading more easily than those earlier outbreaks. What is the most concerning is if many patients get sick all at the same time and will overwhelm the limited capacity of the existing healthcare system. That's particularly the case for countries that have limited healthcare already, but even in countries with very well-developed healthcare systems like the US, we could still be easily overwhelmed if there is a sudden influx of tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of patients who need intensive care. We just simply don't have the beds, we don't have the ventilators, we don't have the supplies for these patients. That's why prevention and mitigation is so important. For most people, the new coronavirus causes only mild or moderate symptoms, such as fever and cough. For some, especially older adults and people with existing health problems, it can cause more severe illness, including pneumonia. The vast majority of people recover from the new virus. According to the World Health Organization, people with mild illness recover in about two weeks, while those with more severe illness may take three to six weeks to recover. In mainland China, where the virus first exploded, more than 80,000 people have been diagnosed and more than 58,000 have so far recovered.